The Red Sox front office report this week brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when your drains don't flow by Shaw's and Star Market, where you can win free groceries in their Grand Slam Summer Sweepstakes by Sherwin-Williams and by Kentucky Owl, the wise man, American straight bourbon whiskey, and Brian O'Halloran, the general manager of the Boston Red Sox, joins us this week on the Harbor One Hotline. Hey, Brian. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing okay. Looks like you'll uh, most likely be able to get a couple in uh, today. Um, it's I, I know it frust- must be frustrating for you guys when uh, you want to get these games in and the weather is ju- just not cooperating. How is it, uh, when it when it comes to that decision and trying to make it in a, a, a more rapid uh, period of time for those fans – what 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 goes into that? Yeah, um, it's you know from from living around here how how uh, unpredictable the the weather can be, and it's you know have, you know I've been here with the Red Sox a long time, and this is a frustration every year, and and we always want to do best by our fans, and 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 for that matter by our players, by everyone involved, like waiting around and then not playing or playing and then having a long delay. That's that's not good for. For anybody, but unfortunately, it's it's a little bit of the reality of of, of living in New England. Um, as far as how the decisions made, it, it, uh, some of it depends on uh, where you are in the year. Like when it's a team's last uh, series in a given city, as it is uh, this time uh, with the Yankees' last trip in here. Um, ultimately, it's up to, to Major League Baseball um, to make that call, um, and and the timing of that call. Uh, the teams are are consulted, the groundskeepers consulted, and all that. How's the field doing? What's the forecast look like? But ultimately in a case like this it's it's MLB's call. Brad, I know you guys are kind of still focused on the season but un- unfortunately it doesn't look like you're going to make the postseason. Is the ownership group is their approach this offseason to make a major splash and are they willing to do whatever it takes to kind of get this team back to what fans want it to be and that's, you know, one of the best teams in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean we are definitely committed to uh, improving this team. Like we're disappointed with where we are a game over 500 and seven and a half back of the, of the wild cards in here in mid September. That's not where we want to be. We're committed to, um, to improving that, to doing things this off season um, to, to help the team um, be in a much better spot next year. Um, we do have, um, you know, a, an emerging young core. There's been, there has, despite the disappointing season um, and the results, um, there has been, there have been some some real positive development from young players, both that have made it, you know, um, uh, that have done well here in Boston and also, um, you know, in the upper levels of the farm system. So we, we are optimistic that we're um, on the upswing from that standpoint, but we need to add. Um, and yes, ownership is is definitely committed uh, to doing what it takes um, to, to to improve the team this offseason and, and go into next year with a, with a chance to win a championship. Brian, Alex Cora was on this station yesterday and was asked about his future with the Red Sox and if he was worried about his job security uh, this upcoming offseason. He didn't seem uh, worried at all, but when you look at ownership or when you talk to ownership, do they treat the offseason with their employees just as they do the players and reevaluate every single person and their role when it comes to the Red Sox moving forward? Yeah, I think, you know, in this business, you're being evaluated every year. Um, and, you know, all, all of us in, in, in jobs like this um, are, are well aware of that. And, and um, so, yes, the, everybody's always being evaluated. Um, and, uh, and but like I said, we'll, we're going to work towards, um, you know, continuing to to uh, build a build this organization, but also take a big step forward in 2024 with um, you know how we how we pl- plan to to compete and um, and hopefully win a championship. Do you still have confidence in Alex Cora that he is able to lead a team and, and players still want to play for him? Yes, 100. percent Alex is one of the best managers in baseball. This has been a tough year for the, for all of us, um, and um, none of us are happy with the results. Um, but Alex Cora is one of the best managers in baseball. I I feel like you know we end up asking this in some way, shape, or form uh, almost every week during this report. But I'll, but I I'll just ask it again. When it comes to the front office side of things, you and Heim, do you feel like you made a mistake 
at deadline time when it came to getting additional help for this team. Now that you have some, now you see where this team is now, and 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 maybe have more of a reflection point on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously the results are what they are. So um, what we did uh, or didn't do, um, you know, and and I would I would take it sort of outside of just or beyond just the just the trade deadline. But you know, you build the team over over years, really, and you build the team. Um, you know, in the off season, and then you've, you know, you make um, really in the grand scheme of things, ultimately smaller, um, dis- smaller uh, additions and, and decisions, even if it's a quote unquote, like big trade deadline, those are in the grand scheme of things. That's um, not usually the most important thing that leads you to where you where you end up. And the sum total of all that has not been good enough. So and you can include the trade deadline in that um, we're one game above 500 seven and a half games out of the wild card. And, and so that's not good enough. Brian, coming from the world of football, generally, you know, when you see teams that are kind of out of it, what they tend to do is give some of the younger players opportunities to see, okay, are these guys that they can lean on in the future? Are there guys that might be at the minor league level that you feel like, all right, let's get them up here and see what they could do. If they can obviously help us for next year. And if so, who are some of those guys that, you know, fans should be looking for? Well, well, you know, some of them are, are here now with with uh, Willie Abreu and Don Rafaela, um, both exciting players that are you know contributing already, and and um, you know you've, you've seen um, some of the other guys up here. Valdez was here; to, you know, we did just send him back, but he's he's been up and down. Uh, Murphy, um, David Hamilton has has spent time here this year. Um, so uh, Robertson's up here now, the pitcher reliever that we got in the Dodgers uh, PK trade. So. There, there already are some some young players here, and that's you know in addition to the guys that have been here most of the year, um, and so those those are some of those names. But but uh, but yeah, it's it's when you're when you're you know not where you want to be uh, in in September, you do want to get a look at, at guys that uh, can potentially help you going forward. Brian, there were 321 days between the Red Sox last World Championship and the firing of Dave Dombrowski, who helped build the best team in the history of the Red Sox. If what you're saying is true and what we've been hearing from the organization, it looks like Heim Bloom and Alex Cora will return after three out of four last place finishes. What has shifted with the organizational outlook so dramatically in such a short period of time? Um, I feel like I get a version of this question every time I come on. <laughs> uh, this one's a little a little different, but uh, I, I, I appreciate your consistency. Um, so... <laughs> The teams uh, are pretty consistently in last place for the last four years. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. Um, so, look. I mean, part of what you're asking about is, you know, uh, ownership level decisions in terms of personnel and things like that. So, but we're 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 going forward. We we believe that um, that uh, that we're poised to to have a good run here with the the um, talent that we've built up, the young talent that started to integrate into the big league team. Uh, and, and, you know, more talent coming in the upper levels of the minor leagues. Uh, we know we have a lot of work to do this off season, particularly on the pitching side. We're ready to do that. So, I mean, again, I, I know we, we're going to have to just agree to disagree on this, but I don't, I don't think we're talking about philosophical changes here. The, the, you know, my, uh, my take on, on the, you know, 22 years, whatever it is of, of this ownership, which coincides with my time here is, you know, we're always trying to um, we're we're always trying to build a team that that has a chance to win a championship that year, uh, and trying not to do anything that prevents us from uh, from sustaining that over time. Um, those are two two sort of difficult goals to do at the same time, but that's what we're always trying to do. We haven't always walked the walk on that, and 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 these last you know two years or three out of four. Um, we have not walked the walk on that from the standpoint of the results at the big league level outside of, you know, 2021. I think the building side of it, um, we have, um, we have improved significantly and I think that puts us in a good spot going forward, but I know that doesn't, you know, satisfy any of us, uh, including ownership or any of us involved or the fans or you, um, as far as where we are today at, you know, one game above 500. You know, what you can do as a bit of a distraction is add a lighthouse, like, have you thought about adding a lighthouse to Fenway Park? Uh, have not considered that. No. <laughs> All right. I think he's still the working on the spicy front of, mustard. Front office. 
Yes, yeah, so you could get the spicy mustard thing done by the end of the season. The um, front uh, question of the week for Brian O'Halloran is from Eddie Vasquez from Wilder Painting in Boston. Uh, Brian, what are the go-to reports that you look at when evaluating players and prospects? Yeah, I mean, we uh, every morning we get uh, reports from our from our you know managers and pitching coaches. Um, uh, for our minor league games, of course, there's all kinds of um, data and metrics this, these days that, that you look at. You want to evaluate the whole player. You want to look at, um, you know, over over a significant enough sample. You want to look at um, all the all the um, defensive data you have to, to assess the, the player uh, from that standpoint. Hitting stats are obviously a little more uh, clear and well known, and but there's there's always new new ways to look at players. But ultimately, um, you're trying to you know, over time, trying to trying to get an assessment of all the skills that make up um, an all around good player. That's the Sherwin Williams question of the week. Ask Sherwin Williams how you can make every day feel like game day with over fifteen hundred colors and a top tier coaching staff. Shop online or visit your neighborhood Sherwin Williams paint store today. Brian O'Halloran, thanks. Appreciate you coming on thanks, guys. every week. We appreciate. It. We'll talk to you again soon. That is Likewise. Brian. Thank you. Take care, Brian O'Halloran, the general manager of the Boston Red Sox.